Tonight, the class of 2015's future surface warfare officers will choose a ship for the first assignment. We asked two SWO officers here at the Academy what their ship selection was like. One, a Naval Academy grad from the 90s, and the second, an ROTC grad. Um, I remember doing service selection and ship selection all on the same night, and then going down the smoke hall and picking a ship. And probably my most vivid memory is hoping to get a gas turbine, uh, Kudez, so either frigate destroyer, um, anywhere in the United States. Well, I'll tell you, my ship selection was pretty quick. I walked into my lieutenant's office at Villanova NROTC, and he said, hey, guess what? You're going to USS Kincaid in San Diego, California. Well, when I got up to the, to the board, there were, um, there were four billets left that were gas turbine. It was, they were all Spoons classes. Actually, it was the same ship out of Charleston. Um, my, one of my friends in front of me picked one of the billets, and I got the second one. How did I select it? I put in a card with choices. Um, you know, first choice being San Diego, second choice being type of ship, third choice being type of job. And luckily I got San Diego, um, but really I had not a lot of choice. I didn't have a ship selection night like they have here. Our ship selection used to be in Smoke Hall. Um, so you would pick surface warfare in the Commandant's Passageway and they would just basically tell you, okay, go down the smoke hall and pick your ship. And back then, it was not a, uh, it was a ceremony, but it wasn't anything like it is today. It wasn't um, a bunch of flag officers and, and senior officers standing around cheering you on. It was, it was literally, smoke hall back then was kind of a dungeon, and you went down and it was, uh, I wouldn't say it wasn't a cheerful event, it was, um, but it certainly was uh, for the guys that were in the bottom of class like myself. You, know, you were hoping to get a newer ship because a lot of the stuff was still steam. Um, and older classes of ships that were still hanging around in the early 90s. My ROTC ship selection was no selection at all. I wrote my choices on a card and I waited for someone to tell me whether I got my first choice of home port or my first choice of ship or neither or both. In the end I got my first choice of home port but not my first choice of ship. Now what is available here for the midshipmen at the Naval Academy is a wealth of experience, lieutenants, lieutenant commanders, commanders, everyone giving them information about the pros and cons of ship types, of home ports. And then finally, the ship selection night allows you to go up and actually make a choice among all of those different variables. That's something that ROTC grads, at least when I graduated in 1996, that's something we didn't have. I would pick the newest, most technologically advanced ship you can possibly be on. Um, I think that will impact your future uh, immensely if you decide to stay in. Um, the more technology you can uh, use as a younger officer, um, you'll have that to your advantage as you uh, grow in your career. I would say that take every opportunity you have to make an educated choice. Don't just go to San Diego because you hear it's cool. You know, make a, a hybrid choice based on really good ship, opportunities on the ship and type of deployments that ship makes. You know, what are your life goals? Did you always want to see the Mediterranean? You know, if so, then choose a ship from the East Coast that deploys through the Mediterranean. Um, so do as much research as you can, as you can do.